So you fancy yourself as a little bit of a Facebook advertiser, but you're struggling to see consistency with your advertising efforts. Maybe you can't even get your first campaign of ads to work, or maybe you can get some campaigns to work, but whenever you try and scale, your ROAS just drops through the floor. And you're looking to understand how the Facebook ad algorithm works so you can leverage it to get better results. Well, Today is your lucky day, my friend, because I'm going to be explaining exactly that in today's video. Now, I'm going to get a little bit technical. So if you're watching this video and you have never run an ad before, you don't even have a business manager set up, then stop what you're doing. Stop watching this video. Go and watch a another video on how to set all that stuff up because this video is probably going to make you more fucking confused. Now, probably not a good thing for the YouTube algorithm for me to tell you to stop watching my video, but it is gonna be pointless for you if you have never run a Facebook ad before. Okay, so let's dive in then. So let's understand what actually happens when you place an ad inside of Facebook. You see, Facebook has these little pools of audiences made up of the user base, and you can target these different audiences pools inside of the ads manager. And what pool people are in is just based off stuff like their interests, their internet activity, obviously like demographics, where they live and all that sort of good stuff. So there's pools of different people and obviously depending on different ages and interests and stuff like that, different pools overlap. Now what you're basically doing when you run an ad on Facebook is that you're putting the interests and the targeting inside the ads manager and you're saying to Facebook, hey, I wanna run my ad to this pool of people. And that's what Facebook is going to do. They're going to serve your ad in the newsfeed of the people that you targeted. But it's not only going to be you who is targeting these people, right? There are literally millions of different business owners who are using Facebook ads to get in front of their customers. So you might be targeting this pool of people, but so is Bob, right? And so is Jenny and so is Sarah. So because there is so much competition for Facebook, it effectively works like an auction where you are all basically bidding to be shown in front of this pool of audience. Now, naturally, as supply and demand goes, some pools of audiences are going to be more competitive and more sought after than others. And that's why you will find, depending on your offer and your business and the market that you're advertising to, the CPM will be higher or lower. Now, CPM stands for cost per 1000 impressions. So your CPM is basically saying, how much does it cost me to get my ad seen 1000 times? And like I said, if you're in a super competitive market, then your CPM is gonna be higher. If it's less competitive and there's only a few people going after it, then your CPM is going to be lower. Now, you can't really do much about the competition in your market unless you are literally just going to completely change your business altogether, which I wouldn't advise. You can try and find different interests that your audience would be a part of that are maybe less competitive. So for example, if you're a coaching business and you're running a self-development offer, then maybe don't target the interest Tony Robbins because it could convert, but it's very likely gonna be very expensive because every coach and their dog who has a coaching offer in the self-development space running ads is probably targeting Tony Robbins. So you could try and find different interests that your audience would like on Facebook, but not like the big dogs that everyone is spending money on. So you can try and combat the competitiveness by doing that. But what you can do is try and win the auction, even if it is super competitive. So I've already talked about the targeting and how you can potentially help yourself win by targeting smaller, less known interests. Then you can also make your ad quality better. So you can make better ads. Now I can't in this video go into a full tutorial on how to create great winning Facebook ads, but obviously the better your ad, the more likely Facebook is going to like that ad and the better you are going to perform in the Facebook auction. If you just put up some crappy ad that is like super clickbaity, the the image isn't high resolution and it's just a really bad user experience, then guess what? Your ad isn't going to perform well, it's gonna be super expensive to run that ad because you aren't going to win the auction. Now, the third thing that we control, and it's what I'm gonna dive deeper into in this video, is the budget of your ad. Because this is something that isn't really understood fully by the marketplace and different advertisers, but if you understand how Facebook responds to different budgets, then you can actually hack the, the algorithm or the auction 
and see better results. So in order for us to understand how it, Facebook responds to different budgets, we need to look at the conversion to spend ratio. So the way the ad algorithm works, when you launch your ad, it is going to go into a learning phase. And during the learning phase, Facebook is going to try and get as much data as possible and as much feedback as possible from the people who see the ad to then try and optimize the ad and the placements and the targeting and try and make sure that your ad gets put in front of the right people that are going to convert. And if Facebook does get enough data, then the ad will exit the learning phase. But if Facebook doesn't get enough data, then your ad isn't going to exit the learning phase and then it's going to fail to optimize and then it will stop performing and the results will go down. So that's why maybe when you first launch a campaign or a first set of ads, they perform pretty well over the first couple of days, but then after like five to seven days, maybe even a couple of weeks, performance drops and the ROAS goes. And it's because that ad or that ad set hasn't had enough data to exit the learning phase. So that begs the question of how does an ad exit the learning phase? What is enough data? Well, enough data for Facebook as of right now is that, that the ad set gets 50 conversions in a seven day window. So whether you're optimizing your ad for email leads or website purchases, whatever the conversion is, your ad needs to get 50 of those within seven days for Facebook to get enough data for the ad to exit the learning phase and for it to optimize and scale. But here's the big problem. When a lot of people see this, they're just like, great, I'm just gonna launch my ad then at like a thousand dollars a day. And that's definitely gonna spend enough money for me to get 50 conversions within seven days. It's gonna optimize and everything's gonna be great. But most of the time, this just ends up with wasted money. And the reason why is because you need to understand Facebook's number one priority. And I wish as an advertiser, I could say that Facebook's main priority is to make us money and get us conversions, but that is not the case. Facebook's number one priority is to spend your money. So if you launch a new ad campaign and you set the budget at $1,000 a day, then guess what? Facebook is going to say to itself, all right, we need to spend $1,000 get the ads out there as quickly as possible. It doesn't really matter whose newsfeed it goes on to, as long as we're in that pool of audience that they targeted, just send it out to them quickly because we need to spend the $1,000. But if you set a lower budget, then Facebook is not going to be rushed in order to spend that daily budget. It can release the ad slowly throughout the day, which means that it can actually take longer and be more thoughtful about who sees the ad. So when you set a lower budget, it's more likely in the beginning that you are going to win the auction and get a cheaper placement. But on the other side of that, you can't just say, okay, Sam, that sounds good. I'm just gonna set my budget at $1 a day and then I'm just gonna get the ad to run and I'm just gonna get the cheapest placements and I'm gonna get the highest conversions. Because again, $1 a day is very unlikely that you are going to get the 50 conversions in a seven day period. Because obviously if you're spending $1 a day over seven days, that means you've only spent seven bucks and therefore very likely, even if you're going for leads or whatever conversion event it is, very unlikely you're going to get 50 conversions for $7. So I know you might be thinking right now, well, Sam, shit, this doesn't sound good. It feels like it is impossible to be able to get Facebook ads to work consistently over the long term. But fear not, this is why I came up with my two phase approach, which allows us to hack the algorithm or hack the auction to scale our clients ad accounts. So we break it up into two phases. So phase number one, is what we call the testing phase. So this is where we launch lots of different ad sets within a campaign and we test different audiences and different ads at a low budget. So for us, we work with like online coaches who are generating leads for VSL funnels and webinars. So we typically set the budget at around five to $10 per day. And we're gonna be generating leads for them. And probably the average lead cost is around, you know, three, four, five, even up to $10 for our clients. If you're running an e-commerce store and you're selling directly a product and your product costs, you know, 50 to $100, then you're probably going to want to use a slightly higher testing budget. But if we leave these ads run, for about five to seven days. No, they aren't going to get 50 conversions in a seven day period, or it's gonna be very unlikely that they do, but it's gonna spend enough money that we actually get data back and we can actually see which ads and which audiences are working 
and which of those the market is responding best to. So after about five to seven days where the first batch of testing ads fail to exit the learning phase, then we have a decision to make. If the initial KPIs and the initial results aren't that good, then we will kill the ads and launch some more. And if say, for example, we have a few ads within that initial testing campaign that they are getting a good lead cost, they are getting leads for, you know, three, four, five, even six, seven dollars, then we can try and scale them. And we basically then move into phase two, which is scaling with CBOs. So CBO is campaign budget optimization, where it's basically where you set the budget, not at the ad set level, but the campaign level. And typically you can get away with spending larger budgets with this setup. So what we do is we typically get two to four ad sets from the testing campaign, depending on how many are working well, and we duplicate them into a CBO. And now we can set a much larger budget at the CBO to make sure that those ad sets get 50 conversions within a seven day period and therefore exit the learning phase. But again, you can't just set the CBO budget at a thousand bucks and be like, okay, cool. I know these have ads have tested, they've kind of worked. Let's just scale really hard. Again, it is a fine balance of setting the budget high enough that the ad sets exit the learning phase, but low enough that Facebook still tries to find you the cheapest placements in the auction. And the way you do that is use the conversion equation to work out your daily CBO budget. So what you wanna do is take basically out of these two to four winning ad sets from the testing phase, you need to take the average cost per conversion and use it in an equation. So let's just say, for example, in that initial testing phase for those two to four ads that were working well, let's just say for ease of numbers that the average cost per lead was 10 bucks and we're happy at $10 per lead. That is something we know we can scale. So if that is the average cost per conversion, so then we just need to set the budget high enough that it's definitely gonna get 50 conversions in a seven day period. So it'd be $10 times by 50 divided by seven. Now that equals, around 70 bucks. Now, because when you set a bigger budget, like I mentioned before, Facebook is gonna try slightly less hard to get you the cheapest cost per conversion. So what I like to do when scaling with CBOs is give the budget a little bit of room to work because naturally the cost per lead in a CBO is gonna be higher than the tests. So in this example, if the conversion equation gave me a daily budget of 70 bucks, then I would probably just put it up to 100. And then what I do is I basically just restart this cycle. So I continue to launch more and more testing campaigns at a low budget. And as soon as two to four of them are within KPI after about five days, I will duplicate them into a CBO, get the average cost per lead, use that into the equation, and then I can set the new daily CBO budget. Now, obviously, if you are an e-commerce store, and again, maybe you're not getting cost per conversions for $10, because this is for a lead, not a sale, then you would still use the same strategy. Maybe your cost per sale or cost per conversion in your testing campaigns that are working well is $30, $40, $50, Whatever it is, you would just input that number into the equation to figure out your daily budget and then give yourself a bit of room, maybe round up to the nearest 100. And then that should be your daily budget moving forward for your CBOs. So I hope that was useful. I know it was a little bit technical. There's a lot of friggin' numbers and it can be a bit overwhelming, especially if you are more new to the paid advertising space. But I honestly spent probably like four to five years without knowing this equation and how the algorithm works. And for the most part during those five years, I was just guessing. And I fell into the trap of, yes, I can get some ads to work, but as soon as I try and scale, as soon as I try and like increase the budget, duplicate ad sets, whatever it was, there was no strategy. I was just kind of like guessing, hoping and praying that my ads would scale. And it was only until I understood how exactly the algorithm works and how to leverage the budget optimization that I was able to consistently scale all of our clients' ads. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this type of content and there's some more questions around advertising that you would like to be answered in a more detailed way, just let me know below, I'll make the video.